Joining us now live via Skype, Dan Cadman, senior fellow at the Center for Immigration Studies, a retired INS ICE official with 30 years of government experience. Dan, we welcome you to America's Forum, and we, we need to get an update from you with this backlog that seems to be growing worse. Last month, 40,000 uh, 40, pending ju juvenile cases. How long does it take to reach a decision in those cases? In non-detained cases, uh, which is what we're talking about here, um, the backlog had reached nearly 600 days uh, as of, uh, say, a month ago or so. 600 days. So you're talking, what, almost two years just before they show up in front of an immigration judge. And that's for their initial appearance. By the time you get into the substantive hearing, you're talking years here. You're not talking about people going home in a month, two months, three months. You're not talking about people going home in a year's time. And so with each passing day and each passing month, there's a reinforcing of the message to people still waiting and deciding whether to make the trek that give it a, give it a go. And you mentioned now a backlog that existed at least two years. It's got to be getting worse. In meantime, we we heard the news as the weekend began that TSA doesn't require any identification for these illegals boarding domestic flights away from the border into the interior of the country. What 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 is going on? Is, is this administration just actively involved in bringing in illegals? But what is your take on it? Well, that's pretty much my take. It's, um, I, I think that the notion is initially was that they would um, disperse them throughout the interior of the United States, quietly hope it could be done with no muss, no fuss, no bother, and allow themselves to be lulled into a false sense of security. And it's exploded in their faces. But nonetheless, it seems to me the strategy is still um, relocate and resettle and it is not send the message back to people in the uh, northern part of Central America where they're coming from that you can't come you shouldn't come and to that extent it seems to me the public service announcements that say it's a dangerous trek don't make it aren't gonna wash with people at ground level reality in those countries well Dan what do you think Congress should do about this four billion dollars the president is asking for I I think they ought to decline to go along with it. I think that even uh, the meager portion that supposedly relates to enforcement really is just to reimburse the government agencies involved, CBP, um, Border Patrol, and ICE for their overtime expenses and transportation expenses that they've been using to fulfill the uh, administration's mission of moving them into other parts of the country. Yeah, you know, th this is going on, as you mentioned, the reimbursement aspect of all this is costing the American taxpayer more and more every single day. Do you think it's getting more expensive the longer we wait for any kind of substantive action, either from the White House or from President or from uh, Congress? Absolutely. There's no way it could be any different. And, you know, when you see parts of the budget, huge parts of the budget for bricks and mortar, what does that tell you about their long term game plan? Anyone familiar with government contracting knows that when you're talking about real estate and property, you are talking about an extended, a very prolonged negotiation between the government and the private sector to obtain contracts to put up those kinds of facilities. That's not the kind of thing that's done in a couple of months. Dan, of course, the bill that uh, the president wants to see passed that will probably get through the United States Senate has a very small portion actually going to border enforcement. Mike McCall, who chairs the House Homeland Security Committee uh, yesterday on Face the Nation, said that uh, the House could put together a much more targeted uh, spending bill to deal with border security. But given the predilections of this administration, is there any guarantee that this administration would use that money even if they worked out a bill in fact for border security? I don't think there is such a guarantee but what I know as a certainty is that the bill that was submitted by the administration um, also holds no such assurances and in fact has a very specific provision saying they could reprogram as much as 30 percent of the funding streams to go anywhere they wanted it to. And there's little doubt in my mind that if they felt the need to reprogram, it would be away from enforcement 
and further into resettlement costs. And so it seems to me if the choice is between trying to tailor a bill that makes sense and buying one that immediately makes no sense, then clearly your choice is to put together a bill that is much more responsible in nature. Well, I can understand the House trying to do so, but part of the politics of the legislative branch, the House comes up with one bill, the Senate bill is probably going to be a rubber stamp for Mr. Obama. Uh, facing that, would it be wiser simply for the House to say no, no bill whatsoever? Well, I think they certainly need to hold their ground on things such as the administration's claim that the um, Trafficking Victims Act doesn't permit them to um, move forward expeditiously. That is just absolutely not true. If you take a look at that, that act, uh, in the first place, every individual who is a smuggled alien is not a trafficked victim. And in the second place, the statistics show us that 47% of the people coming in are adult males. Now, if you add on top of that adult females and accompany children, and then on top of that people who are from Mexico and not from Central America, all of them could be removed immediately. Why isn't that being done? That's where the money ought to be targeted. And Dan, so you believe all these folks who are coming in should be removed no matter what happens uh, in this court proceeding, which is uh, set out by this 2008 law? Well, you have to ask yourself, if the purpose of anti-trafficking laws is to suppress uh, additional trafficking, is it not in the long run the greater good to send a strong message to others contemplating this journey that it just can't be accepted? Isn't that the, the better, more moral thing to do? Uh, it would be, the, it's certainly the more moral thing to do to prevent this in the first place, but as you indicated earlier, it doesn't seem no matter what gets uh, printed in the papers here or what happens here, that message gets to these countries. Well, one way for that message to get to those countries is to see plane loads and boat loads and truck loads and bus loads of individuals um, sent back and arriving in the villages that they came from. You mentioned plane loads, Dan. We're going to circle back, not so much in a holding pattern, but an amplification of this weekend's top story about TSA allowing illegals to fly on commercial uh, jetliners here domestically without any identification. The National Border Patrol Council has come out adamantly opposing the decision. In a statement, that organization said, quoting now, the fact that Transportation Security Administration, TSA, is accepting the I-862 notice to appear as a form of identification and allowing illegal aliens to travel commercially shows just how little regard the federal government has for its own immigration laws. Dan, this weekend we retreated to the spectacle of Attorney General Eric Holder appearing on ABC from the United Kingdom, talking about how we had to toughen uh, TSA requirements for international flights coming nonstop into the United States because of the threat of new bombs that might be undetectable. Does it trouble you that our Attorney General has no such concern about identification for uh, illegals now boarding airliners in the United States? troubles me greatly, and it should trouble every American. The um, document that you referred to, um, it's important to understand that to a large extent, that relies on what the alien has told the interviewing and processing officer. And if that officer doesn't have any additional source of information, he's basically taking the alien at his or her word, which could be a just a fundamental lie. You know, you don't really know who you're dealing with. So, Dan, what happens next is we, we see different communities. We saw in Murrieta, California. We're getting word now from Oracle, Arizona, that there are citizens coming into staging areas trying to stop the buses. Do you expect to see different Americans around the country standing up to protest to try and block the movement of these illegals? Well, I don't know. I suspect so. But, you know, I think it's really significant that even members of the president's party who are familiar with the border are deeply concerned. Henry Cuellar, whose district is, you know, in the border area, has spoken out very vigorously about this. And he obviously thinks that the president, the administration, and clearly other members of his party just aren't focusing on what's really going on there. And I think they need to pay attention to um, 
uh, Representative Cuellar and others like him. Dan Cadman, we appreciate your perspective as a fellow at the Center for Immigration Studies. We'll be calling on you again as this continues, and we want to hear from you, your take on what's happening at the border. Tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.